Hi, uh, welcome to part five of uh, the New Age Religion and the Saviour Complex. Um, and I was talking about um, how, how the uh, power elite use the Bible, I think, as, as a blueprint for the future. Um, and they know it's not, obviously, it's not, it's not um, prophecy, uh, if that's the right word, it's not uh, written in, in, in stone, it's not... Um, a determined outcome it's not it's um, something that they use they trick uh, and this is so kind of obvious when you look at it um, they they trick people into believing that it is is prophecy it's gonna happen it's gonna happen there's nothing that human beings can do about it um, you just got to be on the right side at the right time that's what they say um, that's a powerful weapon isn't it um, for God's sake, you know, they, I mean, just, just briefly going back to H.G. Wells, you know, he wrote The War of the Worlds, another book, he wrote, he wrote a book called uh, The New World Order, I think it was, he wrote The Shape of Things to Come, uh, The Shape of Things to Come was a very influential book, and he, there was a film made in it as well, um, about how, um, basically the world needed to unite in, in, a, in a global government, a world government, you know, we had, had to get rid of, um, um, you know, separate countries and um, people being nationalistic and um, sovereign to their own country and they need to strip those barriers and have a world government to end the war and things like that when um, by the likes of it um, the people that he was uh, were behind him were helping to create wars and, 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 and problems in order to um, unite people in a world government they create the problem and then they give the solution as, as um, you've probably heard that before um, H.G. Wells, you know, was part member of the Fabian Society. They plant an idea and a seed in in books. Books were the weapon um, before we had um, the internet and, and television advanced. It was War of the Worlds. War of the Worlds was written in the 18th century, I think, the late 18th century. It was written, you know, over 100 years ago. So this is a long time in the process. Well, the Bible has been used for hundreds and hundreds of years, maybe thousands of years, to get that idea into people of uh, this is prophecy. It's happened. It's it's written in the stars. Uh, it's going to happen, and um, you know you better be on the right side um, when it happens. You better be one of the uh, good guys. You better, you know, do as we tell you to. to um, um, you know, and, and you look at the Bible, and um, especially um, uh, you know, revelations when it comes to um, you know, I'm t you know, the New Testament revelations when it comes to. God's judgment on the earth and the end of days, the end of times, and what are the signs it says, you know, what are the signs of the end of, um, of days, the final judgment, and it said things like there will be wars and talks of wars, um, and uh, there will be, you know, famine, and, and um, people will fight amongst one another, and people will be ignorant, and, um, you know, this is the sign. I mean, I should have um, actually um, looked some stuff up, some quotes about that, you know, but... Um, it does say that, doesn't it? There's even one uh, Bible I, I was I looks looking at, and it said, you know, what will be, you know, the um, one of God's final judgments, and it even said perhaps it will be weapons of mass destruction. He actually said that. Uh, I'm hundred percent sure of that. And and if people take this as as prophecy, oh, they get they're looking at the Bible, aren't they? They say, oh my God, you know, is this is this true or what? Uh, are we are we in the end of days or what? Look around you. We've got plagues. We've got famines. You know, we've got people dying in third world countries in Africa. We've got wars going on and more more talk of wars. You know, uh, in the Bible it says you know the kings become corrupt. You know, kings turn on each other or stuff like that. And um, you know they interpret that. Oh, we've got you know um, corrupt um, uh, leaders and presidents and you know you know. Um, starting wars and things like that, and it's it's um, it's all prophecy. You see, the Bible was used as such a weapon for that, and it, and my point is as well, it's still being used through the modern interpretation of it, which is is a um, the whole UFO alien cult. That's that's the big message here. It's it's the same thing, um, and people don't. Um, understand that they're too shallow um, <clears throat> that they they don't see the real message 
let's say let's look at the Bible. They don't they don't see and even the teachings of Jesus. They don't see it as an inner message. Uh, they don't see the final judgment, the war in heaven, as the war within their selves. They don't see it as an internal process. They always project it outwards. Most people do anyway, I've noticed. They always project it outwards and wait for an event. And there's an, uh, there's a, there's an old uh, saying, they say it's an occult saying, uh, as, a, as a, with above, so, with, so is below. As with the large, uh, so with the small. Um, so, you know, as with the, um, the, the, the subconscious, the, the human collective, and, and the, the, sub, the human subconscious, which we're all part of, which is, you know, larger than you, if you want to call, you know, there's, there's millions of people on the earth, but, um, you know, it, it, it reflects in your feelings, in your life, and um, the events in the world, you know, when you talk of war and things like that, are a reflection of what's going on internally in people. Um, you know, people don't realise that though. Um, there's there's an amazing truth truth um, in the Bible um, when Jesus is talking, and it's probably in the new the New Testament um, when he's talking about the kingdom of heaven, and he says in the uh, the kingdom of heaven can come any time, and he's he's um, his he's, he's kind of uh, followers are around him, and he's kind of talking to them. And he said, the, the kingdom of heaven is from within. Um, and that's, that's the big message here, that's, that's the message. Um, and he said it can come at any, any time. And if I'm right, his followers are, th they're, they're seeing it as an actual event outside their selves. And they're saying, when, when, you know, and they're, they're looking in, in, in the sky for signs. And um, that's why, um, you know, Jesus is talking in Proverbs because he's, he's only, he's, he's hoping, he's, he's, this is purely for the, the people who are open-minded enough and are free-thinking enough and who are deep enough to actually realise that he's talking about um, the, pro the inner processes, the inner process within each individual that's the you know that's the kingdom of heaven. You create a kingdom of heaven with inside yourself, and then you're going to reflect that in the world, and then you change society. You're not going to change society by waiting for an event to happen um, and hoping, uh, because there are people in this world that will prey on that. And these these are these um, occultists, you know, mas masquerading themselves as great leaders and religious leaders, and and um, you know, and priests and things like that, and and um, psychologists even, and, um, you know, they they prey on that um, because they know that um, people won't really change anything. If you're looking for signs in the sky and things like that, um, yeah. So Jesus spoke in parables because um, he, you know, the character in that book, whether he's real or not, you know, knew that. Um, this isn't for everyone. Um, a bit of a contradiction because that book says not for everyone, you know. Um, but he, you know, the, the character understood that. Um, and this is interesting when you consider what, he, what is intelligence. Um, what is intelligence? What is an intelligent person? And I've, you know, had a bit of a think on that and recently and what is what is an all rounded rounded intelligent person i i don't think now it has anything to do with one you're on a queue um and two i don't think it has anything to do with your ability to grasp concepts whether they i'm not just talking mathematical concepts i'm talking philosophical concepts it has nothing to do with that either um, well, actually, no, it does. Um, it's one of the it's one of the pieces of the puzzle. But ultimately, you you can you can grasp a philosophical concept, you know, a spiritual concept. You can even 
Like, like for example, most pe- people aren't stupid when you say that the kingdom of heaven was, is from within. Um, just as um, another saying, it's, it's a, a harder for a man to get to, into heaven than it is for a camel to fit through the eye of a needle. People grasp these concepts um, philosophically that you know, the, the, the real challenge, the battle, is looking from within your side yourself, facing, facing all of your demons, your inner demons, um, so that you don't manifest them outward in the world unconsciously uh, and, and, and possibly create a hell on earth. You can create a heaven if you go through that initiation, that, that self-cleansing process. Um, it's about, it takes reflection to, um, to be able to see that. And um, so you can grasp those those concept, concepts. You can have a high IQ. You can be well spoken. You can punctuate yourself, and, and all of that. And but the key ingredient to intelligence, um, to you know, real holistic thinking, is honesty. Self honesty. And that and realism. Self honesty and realism, you know. That is that is the key ingredient to being a intelligent person. If you don't have that, you're not intelligent. Not because you don't have the potential to be, but you choose not to be. You see what I'm saying? This is this is the real message here. You choose not to be an intelligent person because you, when faced with something that makes you uncomfortable, that frightens you, you you can't deal with the reality that reality. When you wake up, you know when you wake up, when you hear things, um, for example, on the internet, conspiracy theorists, um, things like eugenics, transhumanism, and things like that. Things I've been talking about. They're pretty hot topics, and they can make you uncomfortable. Um, they can frighten you. They can make you sad. So it takes honesty to look at that and not fall into uh, a self-created fantasy in your mind, or deliberately fall, let yourself fall for a belief system um, because it's easier to deal with it. You you know you 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 basically. Almost, you wake up from a daydream and you fall into another one. And I'm, I'm going to continue that in part six, bear with me.